Are one-click Docker installs possible? Well, today we're going to be looking at a yacht that has that as its goal. And a special thank you to all my patrons, who without your support, this channel would not be possible. And if you haven't already, please think about becoming a patron and supporting the channel you love. So welcome to Techno Dad Life, and my name is Jeff, and today we're going to be looking over Yacht, and so we're going to be installing it and looking how to use it. So this program is still in alpha, so it has a little ways to go still, but it, ha it holds a lot of promise though. So you can find Yacht on github.com selfhostedpro slash Yacht. So Yacht is a container management UI with a focus on templates and one-click deploys. And so basically, this is a shell, you could say, that uses templates that then install the Dockers. Now, to get this to run, we're going to be using this line right here. So what we can do is copy these two lines. And then for me, I put this in sublime text, pasted those in. And so we need to change where the config is located for our particular machine. So if we go to Open Media Vault, go to Shared Folders, click down on the down arrow next to Relative Path, click Columns, click Absolute Path. Then we can right click on App Data, Inspect, double click on our Absolute Path, click Copy, close that, go back to Yachts, and here where it says Yachts in our sublime text, we're going to click there, and then we're going to paste, and then make sure we have a slash in there. So now we have our volume for our yacht config goes in our app data folder. So next we can open up PuTTY, type in the IP address of our server, click open, and then root, and your server password. And so now we're going to do two things. So we'll first, we'll copy the first line, docker volume create yachts. Paste that into PuTTY, hit enter. And there it's created a volume called yachts. Next, we're going to copy that line of code there. Paste that into PuTTY and then hit enter. And so for us, port 8000 is already being used. So let's take a look at that. So if we go to Portainer, we see Portainer is actually using port 8000. So we're going to have to put Yacht on a different port. So what we'll do is change this 8000 to 8002. Copy that. Paste that in and then hit Enter. Once that's done, we can close those two things. So next, if we refresh our container list, uh, there we can see Yacht, and because the Docker description doesn't have a name in it, Portainer just made up a name. Next, if we click on Publish Ports, it opens up Yacht. Since we didn't add in an email or a password, we actually have to look at the yacht description to find out what they are. So if we go over to the yacht description, we can see the default email is admin at yacht.local. So we'll copy that. Paste that in. Next, the password is pass. So we'll type that in and then hit login. Now here you can see it shows the status of my Docker containers that I have up already. We click on Applications and View Applications, and then we have the different way of seeing the containers, sort of just like Portainer. With the same, you can click to get to whatever port you want. So if we click on 3000 for AdGuard, it brings up the AdGuard dashboard. Now if we click on the right, we can start, stop, restart, kill, or remove. So those same things that are at the top of Portainer. Now if we want to add an application, 
This is specifically designed to use templates and there's not a template installed by default. So if we click from templates, we don't have any templates to click on to add from. And so you can click add new template. And this is also down here under templates. If you click new template, it takes you to this very same spot. So we'll call this new template self-hosted. And if we go to back to the yacht page, we scroll down. You can see they have a template they recommend. So we just copy that. Paste that in for the URL and then click submit. And so now we have a template under our template section. If we click on self-hosted, it will bring up all the templates in the self-hosted template JSON. Now this looks very exciting, but we're not done yet. There's still more setting up to do. So before we actually try to set something up, we're going to go down to settings and then we're going to click on template variables. We need to change everything on the left side of the page here. So we need to go back to Open Media Vault and we're going to right click again, inspect, copy our app data path. Go back to Yachts, highlight that, and paste that in. And we're going to do the same for the second one. And then we're going to put slash data afterwards. Now for our media, we're going to right click on our media folder, double click on that, copy, and paste that in there. Same thing for our downloads folder, right click, inspect, double click, copy. And then we have our downloads folder. So now the next section of things we have to change are actually where your folders are located and what you call them. So you have to change them to how you actually have your folders named. Otherwise it will just create new folders. Then you click Save down in the bottom right and then close. Now if we go back up to applications and new application, we click from templates, self-hosted. So now the premise of Yacht is that it is a one-click install. I wouldn't say it's necessarily a one-click install. It's actually quite a few clicks installed so far just to get it up running and a few clicks, more clicks to get it going, but as Yacht is updated and we're able to add different variables in the beginning, then the, the installs from here on in will go a little bit faster. Uh, but right now, uh, because we still have to change, thing, change things in the templates, it, we're not quite at that one click install yet. Now, if we go through these different things, so the one thing you do is you actually have to still open up the web page with the directions for whatever you're trying to install. Again, that's because not all variables are taken into account for yet, but again, that's changing. And so right now we can't click on anything to get to that page. We can click view, which tends to give us a general overview of what's required for this container. Now, if these variables work for you, you can actually just click deploy. Then it leads you through a series of pages where you make sure everything is correct. So we're going to leave this at unless stopped. We have our name and our image name. Click continue. Now our ports, if we have any conflicts, we would change a port here. Click on continue again. And so we've already changed our volumes in the settings section. So these are all now going to the appropriate spots. Click continue. And then here you can see our PUID is 1000, our PIG is 1000. And so for me, my PIG is 100. So this is definitely something that I need to change. And hopefully in the future, we'll be able to do that in the environmental variables here under settings. And then we can click deploy and oh, it has a conflict because I actually already have uh, fleets deployed. But what we can do is, so what I can do is go back to general, 
change the name, networking, change the host port, and now we click continue and click environmental and then click deploy. And now we have a successfully beats two. There's my original beats. If we go to the web UI, it will take you to the beats web UI. Now if we click back, we can go under beats two. We can start, stop, restart, kill or remove. We're just going to remove that. So now that does that only removes the container. It does not remove your app data folder. So you have to delete that separately under your files. So if we click a new application again and from template and then self-hosted, I sort of wish there was a shortcut to go new template to uh, the template details page, which we're on right now. Uh, then it would be closer to one click. Now, if we click on a more complicated one, and so we'll pick Bitwarden, we'll click deploy. You notice down below here, we can pass through devices, give container labels, kernel options, and comp capacities. Now, Bitwarden works with Let's Encrypt, but at least now I'm not seeing a simple or a logical way of adding those two things together. So for at least for right now, from what I can understand of this, is you can't sort of link two containers together, together readily. And that would be something that you would have to do with a different program. Uh, so let's just see what we can set up. So we click continue. It's going to be on port 80. We do not want that. We'll change that to port 82. Open Media Vault is on port 80, so we, we definitely want to change that. Go to volumes. That looks okay. Environmental variables, there are none. Click deploy. Now, if we click on the Bitwarden's web UI, it bring, brings up Bitwarden and we can access the account, but we can only access it locally, not over the internet. When we close that, it brings us back to this page. So here we can see info about the container, the processes that are running, as our logs, and then it gives the stats, use stats here. So Yacht is a great start at trying to simplify container installs with a graphical UI, and we should see great things from them in the future. Uh, so if you're going to use it now, just remember it's still alpha, so there may be problems, but if you go to the GitHub post any replies there or uh, to the OMV forums. There's a thread on Yacht where they respond very quickly. So that's it for today. Hope you found this helpful. Make sure you like and subscribe and we'll see you next time. Bye bye.